So we've been journeying into uh, 1 Corinthians, and we are at chapter 10, right? He encourages the church, and he's saying, you know, let's look back at the history of Israel, for there are some lessons to be learned. So, um, so the Israelites, they traveled, the exodus from Egypt, they went to this place, they went to Mount Seir, and it took, took them some time, and they went, because of their disobedience, they went around for some time. Right? And they went around for some time, around and around and around, and it was, it, was, it was some time. And you see that it was 38 years, right? And, uh, and here he lists down, you know, these things are, are examples. That we, when, as we journey into the plans and as we journey into the purposes of God, that we do not repeat those same mistakes. Looking back at times where, you know, I was held in bondage. You know, sometimes as believers, we, we go through some things, we go through some trials, we go through some difficult times, and, and we look back. You know, when I was not a believer, I used to really do this, and uh, yeah, it, it was good. Life was good back then. Sometimes we make those statements, and those thoughts really cross our minds. And Paul is warning us, you know, do not lust after those evil things. It's possible to experience the hand of God so powerfully and wonderfully in one season, and then go through another season and then question God and then replace God with, with something that is not God itself. Sexual immorality, it could, be, uh, it could be dangerous. It is dangerous. Sexual appetite is God-given. He designed it, but to be consummated within the boundaries of marriage. If we go astray in this area, it can be damaging uh, to our spiritual life. It can be damaging to all our earthly relationships. It can be damaging. And, uh, and we see that it actually destroys our soul. When things are not really, you know, in place and uh, when we complain, uh, when we murmur against the purpose of God, against God himself, and maybe sometimes against the nature of God and the character of God. So uh, Paul reminds us, you know, avoid uh, these things are examples. Do not do these things. The second section is about the cup and the bread. This word communion uh, comes from the Greek word, which we all know, you know, koinonia, which means fellowship, which means to participate, to partake of, uh, to really partner with. So this cup that we are going to take part of or drink from, it's actually a cup of blessing. The bread that we eat, again, refers to the body of the Lord, the spiritual body, the church, that we are all part of. There's a spiritual transaction that's happening as we take part in the communion. There's victory that's coming in. There's curse that is being broken. You know, there are addictions, there are chains that are being broken as we take part in that communion. Third section, which is about idols and sacrifices. Our God is a jealous God. Verse 22, he said, how can we provoke the Lord to jealousy? How can you be part of the table, Lord's table, and be part of the table of demons? Paul is saying, you know, you can't do that. You know what communion is, right? It's, it's, you are receiving something. You are opening your life to the blessings that come from the finished work of the cross. In the same way, how can you go and sit at the table of demons and, you know, make your life receptive, uh, open your life to something, you know, what is happening there? Then the last section that he uh, refers to is, and there was meat that was um, sacrificed to some deities, and it was also available in the market. Probably there was no way of differentiating, right? So he's saying, eat whatever is sold. And also Paul says, you know, if you pray over, you know, you, if you pray, it is cleansed. If any of you, uh, those who do not believe, invites you to dinner and you desire to go, and even in that place, you eat whatever is set before you. You pray, you give thanks, it is cleansed by the word of God and prayer, so you take part in it. But if anyone says to you during the, you know, uh, says to you that, this was offered to idols. Okay? Then do not take part. But, you, but what is interesting is, it is, is this. Do not pay, take part uh, for the sake of the one who said it. Because of that person's conscience. Right? For him, taking part is an act of worship to that particular spiritual entity. And therefore, for that sake of that person's conscience, you politely refuse. 